So are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. Are you able to see this? Yes. Okay. So last time what we did, last time we did that what is a scientist and what are the qualities of a good scientist and then we moved forward to the experimental design that first we formulate a question and then the hypothesis and we the, and then we testify our data, right? We run the different types of tests. Yes. And then we get the data uh, which is uh, grouped into either the variables or the constants. Yes. You remember variables and constants? Yes, I remember. What do you mean by a variable? Variable is like something that changes. Exactly. Very good. And what is a constant? A constant is something that doesn't change. Exactly. And then there were two types of variables. One is the independent variable and one is the dependent variable, right? Yes. You remember them as well? Yes. OK, so now let's move forward. After we have our data, now we have to you remember the next step. We have to share our data, right? Uh -huh. After we have our data, we have to share our data. Bless you. Thank you. OK, now we have we have our data ready. OK, in the form of the different constants or the variables, right? Yes. Now we have to share our uh, share it, right? Yes. Now, how do we share it? We first have to analyze our data. What do you mean by the term analyze? Uh, just a second. Yeah, here it is. What do you mean by the word analyze? I mean. Um... Analyze means to find out if your data is correct or not. So analyze just means to check it to, uh, to check your data thoroughly. OK, analyzing means checking it thoroughly. OK, okay. So first you uh, first the data that you have received in the form of the variables or the constants. You have to check it that does it match the formulate match or formulated question or not. Hello. Hello. Are you lost or are you able to get me what I'm trying to say? Wait. Are you able to uh, understand what I'm able to uh, make you understand? Uh, yes. OK, so now we are talking about the sharing of the data and for sharing of the data, we have to first analyze it that it is true or not. OK, OK, then after that we have to see and check the measurements and the numbers and then we can share it with our fellow scientists with our peer okay okay wait now is it better are you able to see my screen uh no not really yes now yes now okay so now for a better understanding the case study below shows how one young scientist conduct conducted a tomato plant experiment with the three different quantities of the fertilizers. OK. Now here is the full data. It is a full type of an experiment that what do we have to do into an experiment? Now if we revise first we have to formulate a question. You remember? Yes. For performing an experiment, we first have to formulate a question. Do you remember this? Yes. Now here in this case, what is the question that is formulated? That does feeding a plant more plant food makes it grow faster? Do you understand this question? Yeah. Tell me, explain this to me. Um, I think it does. No, no, you just explain me that what does it what what is he asking in the question? If if it 
if giving plant more food makes it grow faster exactly so this was our question right now if your example if you are a scientist and you have to do some research you have to start by uh, by formulating a particular question right yes and then you have to go on the hypothesis for that mm. what you remember from the last study that first we have to formulate a question and then for that we have to make a hypothesis yes do you remember or not or should i repeat it once again uh, seriously repeat it please i should repeat it yes okay so going back to the pages just a moment so here it was a question what was the scientific method right yes here if i ask you that if you want to conduct an experiment how would you do it um then our answer was like for example if i ask you that adwik if you want to consider, if you want to do a scientific uh, uh, experiment what would you do first you would answer me that first you would formulate a question Do you remember this? Yes. It's okay. Method. Then you will. You said that after go answering, after making a question, you will construct a hypothesis. You know this? It is an if and then statement. Yes. Hello. Do you remember this? Just yes, up your brain. Okay. After asking a question, you will formulate an hypothesis for your question, right? Yes. Then you will design your experiment. Yes, I I will design my experiment. Yes. And then you will get your data and then analyze it. Yes. In what form you will get your data? In the form of the variables and the constants. Uh, yes, I think right. So. Yeah, I'm okay. And after that, you will develop a conclusion and then share your findings with your peers or the other scientists. Okay. Do you uh, do, do you remember all the steps here? Um. Yes. Now, should we move forward to the today's experiment? Yes. So now in this question, in this experiment, what did she do? First, she formulated a question that we already told. That first, we have to formulate a question for our experiment, right? Yep. So she formulated a question that does feeding a plant more plant food make it grow faster? And after formulating a question, we have to make the hypothesis for that. Yes. So the, her hypothesis is if I feed a plant with additional fertilizers, then it will grow taller than a plant that is fed less fertilizer. Yes. Okay. Okay, this is her hypothesis. And yes. now she will perform her experiment. In her experiment, she will give some of the plants the fertilizers and the others the less fertilizers. And then she will notice which plant is go growing at a faster pace than the other as compared to the other. Okay. Hello. 
flavor. Are you able to understand now? What is the procedure? We hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? Yes, now no, good. Okay, what? Well. Are you able to understand the procedure? What is she going to do in the procedure? Yes. Okay. And, and then the experiment, what she did, what did she do? The plants were fed and growth was measured over a period of five weeks. Watering, feeding and measurements of the new growth took place every Saturday at 9 a.m. <coughs> okay. Okay. So now after the procedure, what did she do in the procedure? that she took different variety of the plants and she fed both plants with the different fertilizers and to one plant group she did added any fertilizers and then she compared the growth of the plants with each other. Okay. Then if you remember we had two types of data. One was the quantitative data and one was the qualitative data. Okay. So quantitative data is based on the quantity of the quantity, right? Yes. Then in the quantitative data, a chart was made and plant growth was recorded. Here okay. you can see in the example, this is your quantitative data. Okay. In quantitative data, what should she do? A chart was made and the plant growth was recorded. So now here you can see these are the weeks. First week, second week, third week, fourth week and the fifth week. Okay. okay. And these are the new growth in the centimeters. These are 7 gram. Here 7 gram, 14 gram and 21 gram. What does this denote? This denotes that how much of the gram of fertilizers were added to these plants on in the different weeks. OK. OK. This was the uh, 7 gram was given to one category. 14 gram of fertilizers was given to the another category. 21 gram to the another and then there was one category of the plants which had no fertilizers. OK, OK, so here are the weeks and this is the amount of the fertilizers. OK, OK. And this all is the denotion of the different heights that were seen into like the other that were seen into the plants. That in week one, if we add seven gram of fertilizer to a plant, it only grew to two centimeters. But if we added 14 grams, it grow 2.3 centimeters, which is more than the seven gram fertilizer, right? Yes. And if we add 21 grams, it is uh, it is growing up to three centimeters, which is much more, right? Yes. And if we are adding no fertilizer, it is again the same, the two centimeter. Are you getting it? Yes. After that, on the second week, again, if we add seven grams, it grows up to 3.5 centimeters. On 14 grams, 3.8. On 21 grams in week two, or 4.5 centimeter. But if you add a no fertilizer, if there is no fertilizer added, it only grows 2.8 centimeter, which is very less as compared to the growth of the plants which are having the fertilizers. You can see here. Yes. This line, right? Mm -hmm. And the same comparison is made here again. Right. Wait, what? The same comparison is made on week three that if you oh, yeah. add no fertilizer, it's 3.9 centimeter. But if you add fertilizers, much more growth is seen, right? Yes. But in week four, there are devastating results. You can see 
that if you were add in the first three weeks when you were adding more amount of the fertilizer, the plant was growing much more as compared to the others, right? Yes. But on week four, it did not grew as much as expected, and it was much lower than the other than the lower amounts of fertilizers uh, added, right? Yes. And in week five, the plant died if we added twenty one grams of the fertilizer. Okay. Okay. So what did this show? That the addition of the fertilizer. up to some extent is good but giving more and more fertilizer on the regular basis is not at all good for the plants it may okay. cause its death okay 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 so 7 grams is the best what 7 grams is the best uh 7 grams is the best exactly Exactly, you are right. Okay. Okay. Very good. Then uh, this was the quantitative data. Then qualitative data: the leaves on the plants that were fed 14 grams developed the yellow spots in week four. You can see here, even it grew, it didn't grow up to much extent, right? Yes. Then. leaves on the plants that were fed 21 grams of fertilizer turned brown and brittle and stem collapsed at week 4 stem collapsed which means the plant when you added 41 21 grams of fertilizer in week 4 the plant began to die okay the conclusion was made that the manufacturer's recommended amount of fertilizer that is 7 grams was the best for the plant growth okay okay yes yes now did you get this very uh, very nicely yes did you understand this whole procedure now yes very good now you have to plot this data as you have seen this is a table of your data that you got from your plants observation now you have to share it with your peer group okay how will you share it you you can share it into the various forms okay you can okay. share it either in the form of a bar graph this is a bar graph in which you have these squares these rectangles like this this is called as a bar you can see that this is one bar this is denoting one bar right this is a type of a bar mm -hmm. then this is called as a bar graph okay. okay and here you can see simple lines yes so this is a line graph okay okay so a bar graph now this can be also this can also be a measure now you can see you already know that the 7 g when the plants were given 7 g it was the best for the plants okay so you can see the 7 g bar is the highest here yes on in on this scale now this scale the horizontal scale is called as the x axis and the vertical scale is called as the y axis yes so this denotes this x axis denotes the amount of the fertilizer and what are the amounts of fertilizer we used 7 g 14 g 21 g and none means none means no fertilizer right yes and it is the growth that how much centimeter are they growing okay so in the last week you saw that the uh, that the plant which was given 7 g grows up to 7.4 cm right yes so it is shown that the 7 g has the highest bar graph yes but the 14 g grown up to 6.6 cm here right yes so it shows uh, it shows lower to the lower than the 7 grams you can see you can make a comparison 
Yes. Then on 21 gram, the plant died. Yes. So there is no bar graph for this. Okay. It's zero. Okay. And with no fertilizer, it grows up to 5.6 centimeter. Okay. So it yeah. shows here up to 5.6 centimeter. Yes, yes, I understand. You, un you understood yes. this? Yes, I understand. I understood you this. Won't, you won't forget this? Yes, I won't forget this. Okay. And now the same we'll be talking about the line graph. Now the red line, here you can see this is a red line. Yes. And the what does the red denote here? It's written okay, red no. denotes no plant fluid. OK, yes. so it yes, shows sir. and again it is the same. This is week one, two, three, five and this is the growth in the centimeters. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. on week five, this is growing 5.6. Yes. Now tell me about the other three lines, the blue, purple and the green. The blue, purple and the green. Yeah, make me uh, make me understand it. Explain it to me. Okay. The blue, purple and the green is like 14 gram, 7 gram and 21 gram. The green is 21 gram, the purple is 7 gram and the blue is 14 grams. So. Right. And the seven grams grew the most because it was fed the amount of the good amount of uh, um, fertilizer. And then the second best was 14 grams because it was also fed a pretty good amount of fertilizer. But the 21 grams w was fed too much fertilizer and then it died. But uh, right. no pan no fluid also was like pretty good. Exactly. So you understand the line graph as well? Yes. Very, very good. Now we do not know the need to do this and you already know that how to put your graphs to work. Like if you get a particular data from your experiment, you know now how to put it into the different types of graphs, right? Yes. You can do this? Yes, I could do it easily. Very good. Are you confident? Yes. Now should we move forward? Yes. OK. Now what are the trends and the predictions? What do you mean by trend? What is a trend? Trend is something that a lot of people do. Exactly. And what is a prediction? Prediction is something that people think. Exactly that what what is going to happen, right? Yes. Now, what does this rhino have to do with the graphs experiment and sharing data? This is super thing. Now seeing the future, studying trends help us to see what may happen in years, decades and even centuries to come, right? Yes, it is. May it is like making guesses, wild guesses at what is going to happen in the future, right? Yes. So here the trend it is the general direction that data is headed or the way data is changing. Yes. Did you understand this term? Yes, I understand that. OK. Now, how uh, uh, just let us see. So now suppose biologists see that a species is in trouble. For example, there is a Bengal tiger or some species of a tiger that is into uh, that is in the endangered species like which is going to extinct. What is the meaning of extinct? Extinct? Yes. It means like ex going to die very soon. Every every type of that species is going to die. Exactly. Right. So now we know that there is a type of a tiger that is going to die very soon. Now we are going to make the, these are the types of the predictions. Yes, these are making these. We are making the predictions for the different types of animals. OK, then the scientists suggest the ways out. What can we do to save them? Yes. OK, so how would the extinction of that species upset the balance with the other species that share a community? For example, what does they mean here? For example, if there are no tigers. 
okay they okay. eat they eat deer as their food a deer right yes now if there are no tiger the population of the deer will increase into our society yes that will increase because why eat them exactly tiger, exactly and what does the deer eat it eats the grass and the trees and the plants all the vegetation right yes if there is an increased number of the deers into our society they can eat up whole of the vegetation right yes and if they eat whole of the vegetation all the plants will there anything be left for us to eat for example like if there are all the tigers are dead and the population of the deer increased into our society and they ate up whole of the vegetation will there any be vegetation left for us to eat no no right then we will be starving for the food right yeah and then yeah so this is a disbalance that is created into our society when a species gets extinct okay okay now you understand this line that what does how would the extinction of that species upset the balance with the other species that shared its community you understand this line now understand this now we can try to rescue a species before it is too late being a fair of a trend can save our lives okay okay can you give me any other example of a of a disbalance created by the extinction of any species into our environment uh, think of it, any example like i gave you an example of a tiger right okay um the dinosaurs okay and how like, would you related uh, the dinosaurs with the environment and then now there's no more can you, can you play with can you please repeat yourself since one time a meter hit all the dragons there is no more dragons okay and how did it affect our environment or how did it affect the other species around what like i told you if there is extinction of the tigers they are going to affect other species like the deers eating up the whole vegetation and no food left for us right yes what happened if dinosaurs uh, left our earth is there any balance disbalance created due to them um yes what type of a mis just balance we work give me an example listen to my question carefully okay give me any example that you would like like in uh, like in which there is an extinction of a species okay. and the extinction of that species led to a disbalance in our society or to the disbalance to the another species into the environment okay um hmm. uh okay so um hmm, this is hard um no you can do it you can just think and you can do it i know that okay so since there was no more dinosaurs now if if they were actually dinosaurs still then mm -hmm. they would have destroyed our houses and stuff <laughs> okay any other example um uh so like there is six spiders but if there wasn't any spiders left if there wasn't then then 
then they couldn't like uh, they couldn't take like eat insects right and then there will be more insects perfect very good will sting us and then we and then the insects would sting us a lot exactly very good very good so you did it right you understood it right yes okay now moving forward how trends help in everyday life like if you're following a trend or if you're making the wild guesses how is it going to help you um it's i don't know let's read about it okay okay now if too many people now if you're going to make a guess about the population trends so the population trends are very important to watch yes. what does the population trend mean that how much is the population of a particular country and how rapidly is it growing right yes this is a population trend now if the birth rate is heading up it might lead to overcrowding and severe food shortages in the coming year do you agree yes i agree if people are having fewer babies that affects the population too do you agree with this statement as well yes i agree so what do you think should be our population size like it, it is it should is it should be very large or is it should be very short or small or it should be medium um it should be medium why do you think so because like what is the harm what is the harm if the population size is very much very large like suppose if it's like if it's too cold then we will all freeze and the water will also freeze and we can no no no, no 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 wait 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 i'm asking about what will happen if we have a large amount of people into our society a large amount of population too much if we have too many people then that wouldn't be good because there would be so much traffic and like too much and like we wouldn't really be able to fit everyone in this planet exactly very good and what happens if we have a small amount of population a very small number of population into our country if we had a small amount of population then there wouldn't be many people working and stuff and like doing much stuff and it would be like not not that it would be very boring and like we can't even really make stuff with that many small amount of people right now why do you think that the medium population is an apt population for us if there is medium population yeah. we could make stuff and there wouldn't be too many crowds and traffic or stuff like that very good now we'll be talking about the temperature okay like is it should be too cold or too hot now trends help the meteorologists predict the weather sometimes quite far in advance now first of all what is the meteorologist a meteorologist is the one or is a scientist who studies about the weather and make predictions about it okay, okay? Uh -huh. so scientists can tell if there are going to be more hurricanes or colder than average winters for example okay, okay. Yes, so yes. you all you already know that it is very difficult to survive in a very hot weather as well as it is very difficult to survive survive in a very cold weather right yes and it is also very difficult to survive if it's if it's raining all the time there will yes. be floods right yes. so temperate weather is very apt weather for our living right yes then too few if animals and population are affected by the humans who hunt or destroy the habitats so by being aware of the populations that have declining numbers scientists can work to save them like for example you know that there are human populations that are non vegetarian right that eat animals yes also like to hunt they kill animals for just hunting purposes for their pleasure yes and if for example we continued to do this for a long period of time it may lead to the extinction of one or the other species 
Okay, yes. Right? And now you already know that if there is an extinction of some or the other species, you know what effect it can help, uh, it can have on our living system. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know that? Yes. Okay. So now we'll start with a case study of the endangered species. Now, what is the endangered species? An endangered species is a species which is going to be extinct soon. Okay? Yes. Which is in the risk of getting extinct soon. Okay. Okay. So, one of the most important ways scientists use trends in tracking species that are in danger of becoming extinct. They are going to see the number of the different species that they doubt are going to extinct soon. So, they are trying, they go and try to preserve them so that those species do not extinct. And thus, our system, our environment stays in a stable way. Okay. 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 So seeing the alarming data can spur people into action. Now we can leave this. Okay. Now here you can see here again we have a line graph. Is this a line graph or is this a bar graph? That is a line graph, I think. And how can you say that it is a line graph? There's a line going that way. Exactly. So here they are, they are showing us the population of the black rhino and the white rhino. So you can see the number of black rhino that decreased so much that we have only around five left. And this was in year 2010. We do not know anything about 2020. They are left or not or they all are extinct. Okay. And you can see now here I will explain you when a line is shown into a downer in like in a lower way. It means that the population or something is decreasing. Okay. And when it is into the upward direction, it shows that something is increasing. Okay. 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 So now did you understand this? Yes, I understood this. Then what pattern? Sometimes there are no patterns. Scientists encounter this often. Other times something outside of the expected pattern may occur. A good scientist sees this and tries to understand why by asking more questions. Now, some things, sometimes there are some things that go out of the pattern. Like we have, we haven't expected the things to be like this, but they somehow unexpectedly happen to happen. Uh, like uh, they happen that way. You understand? Yes. So a good scientist, what a good scientist will do, a bad scientist will ignore all those things. The things happening out of the pattern, a bad scientist will ignore all these things. Okay. Okay. But a good scientist will never overlook those things. Okay. He will always try to stop and think that why does these things go out of pattern? What is the cause behind this? Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, did you understand this paragraph? Yes, I understand this paragraph. Can you explain this to me? So, scientists sometimes. No. What pattern? What pattern? Yeah. Okay. Well, sometimes in in a pattern there there are no patterns, and that's when that in science sometimes I see that. Mm -hmm. So. Wait, what? I don't understand that. Read it once again. Read it very slowly. Okay. Sometimes 
Ja, no, Okay. Understood? Yes. And okay, so now, yeah. If I don't sometimes there aren't any patterns. So that is sad for you to see when that happens. And other times, it's sometimes outside of the expected pattern. It might, it might occur. So, like, a good scientist always tries to, like, see why it's happening by asking more questions. You're right. Like, if, what does this mean that, what is, it, like, something, how can we follow a trend? We can only follow a trend when, we, when it will have some pattern. Do you yeah. agree? Yes. First, first thing, what do you mean by a pattern? What is a pattern? It's something that happens and then another thing happens and then it just keeps on repeating. It's something that repeats again and again and again. Just a second. Can you see me? Yes. Okay. Now tell me what is a pattern? It's, some, it's something that happens again and again and again and keeps on repeating. Exactly. Exactly. So you can only follow a trend when you see a pattern in it? Yes. Now there are some things sometimes that go out of pattern. Okay. And a scientist doesn't have idea about it. Okay? Okay. So good scientist will be the one which will look for the causes that led to the thing that happened out of pattern. Okay? Like for example, see, listen, listen, listen. Okay, don't, no problem. Now, for example, a particular uh, like a particular scientist was noting that a trend into the decrease of the numbers of the black rhino. OK, you can see here as well. The number of black rhinos is decreasing. Yes, I will see. So there was a pattern that the number of the black rhinos was decreasing. OK. But the scientists never thought that the number would decrease so much because there was no pattern for that. Okay? What is a pattern then? See, a pattern is when something is happened gradually at the, inter at the proper intervals. Like for example, if there is a decrease in the number of uh, black rhino five every year, like from 20, the black rhino is decreasing 15 for the next year. Okay. Yeah. Listen, in year 2017, they had 25 rhinos. Yes. In year 2018, they had 20 rhinos. Yes. Then in 2019, they had only 15 rhinos. So you see the pattern? That every year five number of uh, five of each black rhino were decreasing. Okay. So by 2020 they were expecting that there would be 10 rhinos left. Yes. Okay. But in year 2020, all of the rhinos went extinct. So this this happened out of pattern. This was not the pattern, right? Yes. Do you understand this? Yes, I understand it. Okay. So these are the things that happened out of pattern. So scientists try to understand this, that why this happened. Okay. Okay. 
Did you get this now? Yes. Are you sure? Yes, I understand. Because now, ex now explain it to me in your own words with any example other than the uh, black rhino in your own words. Okay, like so. So suppose you're like so. Okay, suppose there are like a hundred spiders, right? Right. And then in 2021, there will be like uh, 90 uh, spiders, right? Okay. And they keep on happening, right? Okay. But I, like in 2029, there are only 10 spiders, right? Okay. I mean, yeah, there are only 10 spiders, right? But like people would think in 2030, there will be no more spiders. But mm -hmm. for some in 2030, there are five spiders. So it's very good. Why that happens? Very good, very good. You understood this, right? Yes. Very good. Now, nature's furry. What is in nature's furry? In summer 2011, the town of Mineral, Virginia, was the epicenter of a large earthquake. There was an earthquake in the Mineral in Virginia in 2011. Okay. In the months after, there were many small aftershocks. Since Virginia is not in a usual earthquake zone, scientists looked at the pattern of the earthquakes that occurred to better understand what may have caused them. Now, there is this, uh, this Virginia. It is not a place of earthquakes. There are no usual earthquakes occurring in this place. Yes. So the scientists learned and talked about that why did this earthquake took place in this place? What was the pattern about, about here? Like see, the same thing that there was no pattern observed of earthquakes in this plane, is in, in this place, in this place, Virginia. Okay. But out of nowhere, there came a largest and a very high magnitude earthquake. So scientists try to predict the reason behind the upcoming of the earthquake. OK, that why did the earthquake came there? Why did it break the pattern and the uh, origin of the earthquake was in Virginia? OK. OK. You understood this? Yes. Read it again from in the summer. So like normally in Virginia, there isn't any earthquakes, but in 2011, somehow like a huge earthquake came in a small town in mineral Virginia. And scientists didn't know why this happened because in the Virginia, normally where earthquakes never happen. So now they are asking why that happened. So now is this for the, did this earthquake followed a pattern? No. Perfect. Did you get this now? What is following a pattern now? Yes. And what is going out of a pattern? Yes. Very good. Now weather reporters can tell us the forecast for the next week, but by studying the trends and the patterns, they can look much further into the future. Okay. They can study data, uh, data about the ocean's temperatures and predict that it will be an active hurricane season or an especially snowy winter. So mm -hmm. what does like I told you uh, before as well that there is a scientist who studies about the weather and he's called meteorologist, right? Yes. So a meteorologist will study about the different oceans temperature that is into the present and then will tell about the future predictability of the weather that is going to be taking place in the coming few months in that particular area. Whether it will be rainy season, whether it will be a snowy winter or whether it will be too hot desert summer. OK, OK, OK. So they can predict at what point too much rain will lead to flooding. Yes. Okay. Do you know about the cyclone that came recently in India? No. 
So there was a there was a cyclone which was predicted to come in the south uh, southwest region of India. Okay. Okay. The name of the cyclone is Amphan. Yes. Okay. So the meteorologist already warned around 10 to 15 days earlier to the people of that region that there is a cyclone which is going to come in the scheduled days and you need to evacuate this place as quickly as possible so that they can save lives as many as possible. Yes. So this is a way that how meteorologists work and they can predict the future and they can help them in saving many lives in that region. Like okay. for example, if we didn't know about the cyclone coming in this region, okay, what do you think would have happened? Um, then uh, like a lot of houses would be destroyed and a uh, lot of people would like uh, die. Exactly. So and if the meteorologist knew earlier that there is an upcoming cyclone, they evacuated the region and saved many lives, right? Yes. So is this uh, is this uh, weather thingy like is this following a trend or following a pattern useful for us or not? What do you think? Yes. Yes. And how can you say that it is useful for us? Because if it were, if they didn't tell us this, then a lot of people would be dead. Exactly. Knowing this, they can warn people to leave their homes if they live in the areas likely to be flooded. Once more prediction saves lives, right? Yes. Then a disturbing prediction. What do you mean by a disturb a disturbing prediction? Uh, by disturbing prediction, it is like um like. I don't know. OK, really, what do you mean by disturbing? Uh, like. I don't know. Some, you know something it. that uh, something that disturbs you, some things that make you feel uneasy. Uh, OK, OK, OK. And you already know what is a prediction? Yes. OK. Now let's see what is a disturbing prediction like it means a disturbing prediction is a prediction that is not good for you to know about or that is that is not good like that doesn't sound good to you to hear about. OK, that disturbs you. OK, OK, that makes you feel uneasy. Yes, OK. So there is a lot of talk these days about the global warming and scientists are seeking some alarming trends. What is global warming? Global warming is like. When people like use a lot of uh, like suppose when people like make the room very like cold and then like. Uh, stay warm inside a blanket it's causing global warming no 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 see global warming is made up of two words first global and warming right hello yes yes hello. then globe what do you mean by global global is our globe which means earth Yes, OK, so global warming means like when someone uses a lot of coal air and then there's only like warm air left. What does one use is? Like when somebody uses a lot of coal air and then there's only warm air left. So like no, you, you we cannot say it like this. How can one use cold air? It is not upon you, right? What? I'll explain you what is global warming. Global okay. warming means when the Earth's temperature is increased. Global means Earth and warming means when something heats up, right? Yes. So global warming means when the temperature of the Earth in, is increasing. And why okay. is this happening? Because of the increased traffic, because of the increased use of the automobiles 
and why what does happen when we use a lot of automobiles like the cars engines and everything they release harmful gases right in the oh. form of the smoke yes and this smoke together coagulates into our environment and helps in increasing the temperature of the earth okay you get this yes the use of the air conditioners the use of the freezers or the elimination of the very dangerous gases into our environment which helps in increasing the temperature of the earth of the globe which which then causes the global warming okay so like so like whenever right. like so like um whenever uh, like the the fireplace it, it, whenever the fireplace ring releases smoke it causes this harmful things to the air exactly exactly in air we have like a lot of oxygen right yes but when we use these all engines automobiles air conditioners and everything these give out the another gases like carbon dioxide nitrogen fluor fluorine and all this all of these right yes so these gases come into the air and decrease the amount of oxygen okay which heats up the earth and also cause uh, cause the respiratory problems in the humans okay yes Let's so these yes. now at the alarming uh, stay at the alarming uh, you can say rate the earth's temperature is increasing which is a very bad sign for our lives yes okay okay because it is harder for us to survive into the very hot temperatures and also you know there are two poles north and the south poles right yes they have the glaciers and due to this heat due to this increasing heat the glaciers are also melting Okay, yes. Which is increasing the water level of the earth. Okay. Okay. And this yes. is not having a very good impact on our lives, which is making our lives miserable. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now here you see that polar warning. What do you mean by polar warning? It is that. when this ice on the glaciers is melting the polar bears are designed to live on the ice right yes when there is no ice left the polar bears can die yes okay and it can and it can lay, uh, it can cause their extinction okay do you agree yes and now here they have shown the bar graph for the carbon dioxide into the air and they are talking about the year and the amount of the carbon dioxide into the air so what year 1960 70 80 90 2000 and 2010 after every 10 years they are checking the amount of the carbon dioxide into our air and you can see that the amount of carbon dioxide is increasing rapidly after every 10 years from 317 it rose around 390 okay and if there is more amount of carbon dioxide it leads to the less amount of oxygen into the air right yes which can cause very much difficulties in our daily lives right yes right so do you understand what we all we, what we all talked about today yes i understand you understand this case study Yes, you understand the different bar graphs and the line graphs used to manipulate and represent your data. Yes. Then we talked about the predictions and the trends. Yes, I understand that too. So you understand? Yes, I understand. Okay. Now we can do 
the next topic in our next lecture, right? Yes. Okay. So everything is clear. Do you have any questions? No, no questions. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I don't have any. Okay. So have a good day then. Take care and enjoy your Sunday. Okay. Bye. And if, and if possible, go through the things that we have done already once again on your own. So that okay. if you have any questions, you can ask me in the future. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Okay.